Pastor Dan, and we're doing Spotlight. And we just feel like we need to spend a few more minutes with the last one, which is Matthew 22 in the kingdom. The kingdom and the story of the wedding banquet and the wedding garment. So just to review quickly, the king wanted to have a great wedding banquet for his sons getting married. He invited the A-list. They refused to come. He said, go out to the highways and byways and invite everybody, both good and bad. Invite them. So, the, so the dinner, the banquet is open to everybody. Even if you've made some mistakes, even if you look at your life and just say, this is, I, I am not, I'm not going to make the grade. The door is open and the party is available to everybody, both good and bad. We're all a mixture of good and bad. I have to. Everyone else except Jesus has been a mixture of good and bad. And we can still get in. The door will be open. Everything is ready. When Jesus died, everything was ready. Nothing more had to be done. Hebrews in the first century, everything from God's side is open to go all the way to God. The veil ripped. You can go all the way to God because of Jesus on the cross and the resurrection. It's all you really need for salvation. And then we talked about the wedding garment. And the wedding garment was sent as a gift to everybody who was invited. If you didn't have a beautiful wedding garment, you gave it. the king gave it to you. And everyone else, evidently, came in the wedding garment, except one man who doesn't come. And Mora uses a title for this, the man who went naked to the wedding. Because Revelation 3 says, apart from Christ, you are poor, blind, pitiful, and naked. Apart from Jesus, we're naked, whether you realize it or not. And so you put on the wedding garment. Is the wedding garment uh, justification or sanctification? First grace or second grace? And uh, you can make a case that it's both. But in Revelation 19, it says specifically that the right, the, the right robes that everyone is wearing to the wedding is the righteous acts of the saints, Revelation 19, 8. So this is righteousness that has worked out in your life. This is beginning to change, and it is not because you have now sweat and strained and backboned your way into living a righteous, good life so that everyone says, boy, look at them. It is all by Jesus. It is all by Jesus because it says the fine linen was given her to wear. It's a gift from Jesus. Justification is a gift from Jesus. We don't have anything to do with it. Jesus went down and died. He died. It is a complete gift from outside of us to us. They call it alien righteousness because it comes from outside from Jesus. There's nothing from you and I that contributes to that. It's not a potluck. And we know that a glorification, when we walk across the gate into heaven, that's all Jesus. We will be given a righteous body like Jesus. That's all Jesus. But sometimes in this battle to become like a righteous person, to become like Christ, we sometimes think that that's a mixture of Jesus and me. And yes, it is in my body, and yes, it involves me walking and reading the Bible, and it involves me. Yes, it does. But can we say it is as much an act of Jesus as the other two? The second grace is a gift from God. The wedding garment is a gift from God. And when you and I come to the wedding, it comes as a Jesus, the gift. You and I getting over some bad words. You and I learning to keep the Sabbath, learning how to give our offerings, learning how to be kind, learning how to not be selfish. All of that is by Jesus. The more time we spend with Jesus, Jesus transforms us. By beholding, we become changed. But now we come to the issue of the judgment. So the king looks around his party and he sees everyone wearing the wedding garment except one. Is it difficult to tell, do you think, for the king who is in the right clothes and who is not? Who is dressed and who is naked, to use that metaphor? It's not difficult for the king we get the idea sometimes that God is in heaven and he's got measuring instruments and he's got angels and they are counting the, everybody's sins and there is some fancy algorithm where God is doing some 
some uh, evaluation of everybody and they're more good than bad and how good and how righteous and how pure. Sheep and the goats, are you in or out? I have friends who have a chocolate company and I've watched the conveyor belt coming and it, it weighs every box of chocolates and if it's a fraction of them, an ounce too heavy or too low, it comes out and they sort and put the, the candies right until it's exactly the right weight. Is that what God is like in the judgment? Weighing everybody. And that's what most religions have. The Egyptians have weighing the heart. And they weigh your heart to see if it's weighty enough and heavy enough to be saved. Buddhists have the gods who are judging you and deciding which life you will have in your next reincarnated life. Muslims will talk about going on that bridge over the fire. And how you make it, and, and, and how hope, hopeless to make it. The judgment's just too hard. No, the judgment's not hard. It's, do you have the son? He who has the son has life. Did you take the wedding garment? Did you take Jesus' wedding garment? And say, okay, give it to me. I'll take the white robe. Are you with Jesus? Maybe no one else knows, but Jesus knows and you know. Are you with Jesus? I am with Jesus. Yes, I am. I am with Jesus. That's the judgment. Have you taken the wedding garment of Jesus and taken it to your own life? We'll go to another one next week, but thank you for being in Matthew 22 with us. And Jesus calls you friends. No matter whether you're good or bad, you walk in the door, if you have the wedding garment, you are a friend. And even the one who doesn't have the robe, Jesus says, still my friend. Wear the robe. And you can be in my party. God bless you. See you next time. Thank you for watching Spotlight. We're so excited about this. We hope that you'll subscribe and so you'll get all of them. And please just forward it on to others and tell other people about it. And let's just see what kind of an audience we can get for these messages of Spotlight. God bless you.